Welcome back to Red Tech. Now, hands down, the most common question that I'm asked is about black shading. What is it? How often should I calibrate the sensor? And should I be doing a manual or an auto calibration? Now, my goal here is to demystify black shading. It's one of those things that can be intimidating at first, especially since there are so many different opinions as to when you should do it, as well as varying circumstances that would warrant a fresh calibration. Hopefully this provides some clarity and it becomes less of a concern for anybody getting ready to shoot red. All right, so to put it simply, black shading ensures clean and consistent pixel sensitivity across your entire image. The process will map out any fixed pattern noise like lines or lit pixels and produce a uniform noise profile over the entire image without fall off one way or the other. All right, on your LCD, there are two things that you need to be conscious of. There are the camera's temperatures and the calibration T and E indicators. These are the two things that have a direct impact on the sensor calibration itself, the physical temperature and the exposure time, your shutter speed. Generally speaking, if these are both green, then you're good to go. A good calibration will have a nice, clean, uniform noise floor, whereas a bad or out-of-date calibration might have some vertical streaking, fixed pattern noise like lines or lit pixels, or a shift in the noise floor. Chances are the T is naturally going to turn yellow depending on your fan settings while recording. In most cases, this isn't an issue. However, you should be more critical, especially on older bodies, of the indicator when it's on the colder side. Two common scenarios where this could occur is immediately following a cold boot after the camera spent the night on the camera truck, or if the ambient temperature is so hot that the camera's unable to maintain that target temperature even with the fans at the max setting. By default, the target temperature is about 38 degrees Celsius, but you should maintain whatever the target temperature is following your calibration. You can find your target temp in the fan menu. This value will be set by your black shading. For the best image possible, the best practice is to allow the camera to warm up prior to recording. On the more current cameras, we've added a heater to the sensor board to help manage the sensor's temperature and reach that target temp much faster. How often you should run a calibration is subjective. The most obvious is when the camera prompts you after a firmware update. When the camera prompts you, it's crucial that you listen to it. Any improvements or bug fixes in the sensor operation will not be applied until a black shading is done. It's also very important that you delete older calibration files as they could contain the older prefix sensor settings. The other obvious indication that you should calibrate is if the T or E indicators aren't green while the camera's at idle. If they're both green, but you have changed environments from something like being on a soundstage to a colder exterior night, the camera thermals will naturally be different. At this point, it would make sense to allow the camera to reach its idle temperature. You do this by building up your camera, then letting it sit until the temperatures at the bottom of the LCD stabilize. Once they level out, you can run a new black shading. I've heard of some people running them every single day. In my opinion, this is a bit overkill. Simply calibrating when there is a large temperature change or when longer exposures are a factor, so if the integration time is slower than an eighth of a second, should totally suffice. If someone really wants to be diligent about it, there's no harm in making it a weekly or bi-monthly procedure if it gives the user confidence. The one exception for me personally is when shooting 3D. I run a black shading calibration more regularly since the images are literally being laid over one another and the cameras will have different thermal characteristics based on their orientation in the rig. All right, let's cover the procedure for running a black shading sensor calibration. The first thing you wanna do is boot the camera and allow it to reach its idle temperature. Next, make sure that no light is able to reach the sensor. Light leaking onto the sensor will absolutely compromise the calibration. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll drape duvetine or something over the lens or camera mount. This serves two purposes, partially for avoiding light leaks, but mostly as an indication that I'm working on the camera and it will hopefully prevent someone from forgetting and accidentally exposing the sensor. It's very important that if you do this, that you do not fully cover the camera or block the fans. This will drive up the camera's temperature and defeat the purpose of allowing it to be at its idle temperature. Make sure that you use a fresh battery or the camera is connected to house power. You don't want the camera to die during this process. Okay, let's navigate through the menus. Let's go to menu, settings, maintenance, calibrate, and sensor. Here you have the option to apply, create, delete, and rename your calibrations. 
At the top, you'll see the current calibration map that's applied. The name is laid out as follows. You have the, the shutter speed, sensor temp, date, and a couple random digits. If you're starting fresh, I would recommend deleting old previous leftover calibrations. Restoring the factory settings will not wipe out the calibrations, but a full camera wipe will, so be aware of that. When you're ready to start, select Create, and you'll have the option to choose between performing an auto calibration and a manual calibration. All right, now for recommendations. Now, assuming you're shooting 24 frames and 180 shutter, which is a 48th of a second, on the Helium, Gemini, and Monstro, you're gonna wanna always do manual calibrations. And this calibration will be good anywhere from an eighth of a second all the way to an eight thousandth. Now, if you're gonna do some longer exposure times, then you should just do a manual calibration for whatever exposure time you land on. As far as Dragon is concerned, under the same settings, we always recommend an auto calibration. And this auto calibration will be good from an eighth of a second to an eight thousandth. But if you go beyond that and you shoot longer exposure times on Dragon, then you're going to want to do a manual calibration for the specific exposure time that you've chosen. Now, remember, always do a black shading if those teeny indicators are not green. And one last note, if you are shooting very high frame rates and pushing the top end of what the camera can do, then you're gonna wanna probably do a manual calibration for those really, really high frame rates because the calibration can be a little more sensitive to shift. The auto calibration captures 16 different exposure time settings and uses that data to build a curve. This covers the full range of exposure times, but it doesn't factor in multiple temperatures. You would still need to recalibrate to accommodate a temperature shift. This auto calibration will also take nearly an hour to complete. After selecting manual, I'll have the option to choose how many calibrations and at what shutter speed. One calibration will usually take about five to eight minutes, depending on the sensor size, and the duration will go up accordingly if you choose to run multiple. Now we're just gonna do one at a 48th of a second, which is 180 degree shutter at 24 FPS. When selecting start capture, I get one last reminder to cover the sensor and then I'll hit okay. At this point, you can get yourself a cup of coffee, jam on the ukulele. While you're away, the camera will do the following. Now the bar may pause from time to time, but just be patient and write it out. The camera will notify you that the calibration was successful. If you'd like to rename the calibration, you can do so at this time. I'll usually do something like 24 FPS standard or a 24 FPS high temp, just so that it's more clear for the camera assistants which one to use and when. Before I set you free, let's talk about troubleshooting image anomalies and what to do if your calibration goes poorly. If you lose power during the black shading, just power the camera back up and create a new one. If you accidentally expose the sensor, let the camera finish the calibration, delete it, and then start another. If you're seeing some lines in your footage, maybe like a lit pixel or a color shift, run a black shading and it will likely address the issue. Okay, so that covers black shading. I hope this video has been helpful. Please let us know in the comments below if you have any questions and make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you're notified when we release the next RedTech video. And I will see you out there.